Hi, I'm Sandra Bullock. Many, many, many years ago, I fell in love with an extraordinary city by the name of New Orleans. A few years ago, about six, after Hurricane Katrina, I fell in even deeper love with a few thousand people who made up a community to bring back an extraordinary school by the name of Warren Easton. This is a story about commitment, community, volunteerism, blind faith, and a whole lot of love. The history of the school is very unique. In 1843, a boys' high school was created with a mission to educate the children in the working class in New Orleans. And it's that founding that has led us into this building. The school has changed from all boys to co-ed to all white to mostly black. It, it never mattered. It's always our alma mater. And, and our song, our alma mater, has a stanza in it that says, Warren Easton marches onward through victory and defeat. And bravely, without murmur, what fortune sends, we meet. Or misfortune, in the case of Katrina. I mean, just about knocked us dead. Well, after Katrina, um, the push to open the school didn't exist. It was sort of... It, the, the plan was maybe to just turn it into condominiums? That Absolutely. That's, that's what we heard. A lot of damage here, and it would have been easier just to let it die, you know. But uh, over our dead bodies, you know. <laughs> Not my school. <laughs> we knew the school was not going to open without some outside help, so we stepped up to the plate. When the school board announced that they were going to leave the school closed indefinitely, the Hall of Fame committee, we decided that we could not let all that history and legacy go by the wayside. So we formed a charter group. We got the charter, the good news is, and uh, we opened in 2006. What is it about this place that brought together so many diverse groups that were so impassioned by Warren Eaton's story and wanted it to succeed? It's just always been a special place, you know. We say once an eagle, always an eagle. I attended this high school from uh, 59 and graduated in 62. My father was principal then. I literally grew up here from the time I was a little kid. So this place is family in more ways than one. Most of the kids, we get actually our legacies. They, their parents went to Easton, their sister went to Easton, their auntie, uncle, grandparents went to Easton. We get a lot of kids that are from families that went to our Easton. many schools don't have music programs anymore. What is the, the thing that you'd want to express that, that's the most important thing about music and what it does for a human being? <laughs> I'll cry that uh, right here. Uh, I, don't, it's, I don't know. It's everything. Um, I, I remember being... Oh, huh? was, I was supposed to be strong. <laughs> I was a band director. I have a few kids who... Um, I used to worry about it a lot and um, put a trumpet in their hand. This is a safe place for you. These are your friends. This is your family. You know, if you're having a bad day, come to the bad room. One thing I'm always going to remember is the band director, Miss Hazel Mohammed. Like, I played too, but our biggest problem is that we played too loud. And she always told us and constantly fussed at us about it, telling us that with music, it's like life. You can't always be seen. Sometimes you have to take time out to play the background, so therefore you can have a beautiful piece of music in which you're striving to work for. I don't even look at it as a job. Because if, 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 if you're doing something that you always, always wanted to do, that you really love doing, it's not a job. I've heard that before. It's not a job. You know, the, the, the days are long. The nights are long. When you're talking about days, you go into the night. <laughs> but it's not a job. So listen up. I'm the officially the parent liaison of Warren Easton, where I actually help the parents to stay engaged with what the students are doing. I'm also the head coach of the Warren Easton Eagleette dance team. And explain what that is. Oh. Weren't you an Eagleette? Yes. I was the captain of Warren Easton Eagleette. You heard me, everybody? 
when Katrina hit, it, it was a devastation. The only thing that I can actually hope to bring back is that same homebound feeling, to, to bring back that pride that everyone had. I've always told my girls, I've told everyone, all it takes is one person. Mm -hmm. All you need is that seed to just plant, and then it can grow from there. So I'm hoping that I would be a great impact to them. Now you're going to show us some dance moves? Ah! Gonna... <laughs> but, no. <laughs> <laughs> big family, you know, in a lot of places you hear that, but here we mean it. We are one big family. Teachers, staff, students, we're all in this together. We have after school tutoring, we have before school, during lunch, we have Saturday classes. If you just want to come and do your work um, to catch up, or if you don't have a computer at home and need to come and, and use the um, whatever we, tools that we have, the school is open for kids. We make children feel safe. We make children want to learn. If you're not here, we want to know why. We're interested in you. We have no problem of coming to your house. I have no problem of coming to your house. We are going to make sure that these young people grow into young adults, and they know it. Uh, children know it when parents, adults, love them, and they respond in kind like a family, it's like another home. We're here most we're here more than we're at home with our regular parents and it's like um from the principals to the teachers to the custodians, it's like everyone you know, everyone name, you have a personal relationship with everyone and it just makes it comfortable to work and you can trust and ask for help if you're falling behind. You can, you know, people support you and the whole school. Here yeah, like it's a different environment. Like when you walk through the doors it's just like I don't know, it feels like you were like at a second home or something. And like the teachers always push you to do your best. There's no, there's no second best, always your best. Like a lot of times you might get mad at, at, at something you might say about uniform or something, you might get mad, but like later on you think about it, it'd be like, oh, they really care about how we look and he wants to look our best and stuff, you know? If I ran from Mr. Warren Houston, I won. <laughs> so, <laughs> and so a lot of my classmates, um, they supported me, and even, like, you know, I had rival people running against me, but it was always a friendly competition. What are you going to bring this year as the elected Mr. Warren Easton? This is my school spirit. I'm oh. Mr. Warren Easton. I love Warren Easton. taking anywhere from 20 to 30 students a day. They do the hygiene, preventive, mm -hmm. and also they do, you know, the treatment they for do. the children. Yes. Oh, yeah, definitely. And that's the panoramic x-rays that they do for all the kids that come in. Most of the exams and um, the triage happens to you. And then there when the kids come in. The kids have to come through me. So I'm, I know so just or something that I can just pack up real quick. And then they come through here. Where the two lane nurse and doctors are waiting. So many schools don't have something like this. What is it about this school that was able to pull it together? Why did this actually go through? But so many other schools can't manage to do it. I don't think that it's that so many other schools can't manage to do it. Mm -hmm. It's just a, a process that takes time mm -hmm. to get it done. And it, it works. School-based health work. They come to school to get treatment. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then they're sent to class. So then we decrease how, how many times they're absent, mm -hmm. how long they're off getting treatment, even with dental. Mm -hmm. They're in and out, back to class, and just basically keeping the children healthy. Yeah. You know, and when they have questions, mm -hmm. they get answers. You know, every student has their struggle. And when you walk through those doors, that didn't matter anymore. I remember one quote that said, you said you'd never been surrounded by so much integrity, and, and that means a lot to us. You know, it's, it's quite a place. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. It's, it's, uh, and I'm not embarrassed to say that I'm hearing up, but uh, that's been the last not me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here for you. <laughs> It's so rewarding to see these young people today start living it up. They're living up to the highest ability they can. They did not allow us to create excuses for our education. 
We know that you don't have a parent at home, they would tell us. But what does that have to do with you doing what it is that you need to do to make sure that your child doesn't end up like that? Thank you for helping us. Oh, my job was easy. I just did this. You did no, all the hard work. No, you have a big heart and we love you. We really you. do. It's not only for the money that you give, it's for the support. You are there and you understand what we're going through. Yeah, I, I see what you do and that's why you make it easy to support people like you.